Okay, so everything you ever needed to know about a rational function, uh, how to graph it, how to find all of the things that go along with it. Okay, so let's see. What are the restrictions on rational functions? Okay, as in, what kind of domain restrictions do we have? So you should know and be writing down the denominator the denominator can never be zero that's the restriction you can't ever have a denominator of zero because then your function is undefined so you have to keep out any number or groups of numbers that would make your denominator equal to zero Okay, so denominator can't be zero, so take out any numbers from your all real set that would make the denominator zero. Okay, to find the vertical asymptote or asymptotes, you set your denominator equal to zero and solve. Okay, remember, vertical asymptotes are your vertical lines that divide your graph. So they are always x equals is some number. Okay, it's an equation. A vertical asymptote is an equation of a vertical line. Where the denominator domain restrictions will be x does not equal. Okay, these ones are the restrictions not equal to. These ones are the equals because these are equations. A, to find the horizontal asymptote, you look at the exponents of your denominator and numerator. Okay, depending on the powers of the exponents, depending on the exponents, you will have, of course, three different types of horizontal asymptotes. If the graph is bottom heavy, otherwise known as the exponents in the denominator is larger than the exponent in the numerator. If the denominator has a larger exponent than the numerator, okay, like a 3 and a 1, then it's automatically every single time y equals 0 is the equation of the horizontal asymptote. If it's the graph, if the function is bottom heavy. If the denominator has a higher power than the numerator, you have y equals zero as your horizontal asymptote. Okay, if they're equal, if the degrees are equal, the degree of the denominator equals the degree of the numerator, then you have to look at the coefficients. and determine from the coefficients of your highest power what that's going to be. So once again, it's always y equals some number, whatever that happens to be. And I think there's some examples coming down later where we will actually have to calculate that. Let me see. Yep, there's one right there where we will calculate the horizontal asymptote having an equality of numerator and denominator. Okay, and the third option is if it's top heavy, in which case the denominator is smaller than the numerator in degree, maybe this is a two and that's a one, then there is no horizontal asymptote. Okay, no horizontal asymptote. Instead, there's going to be an oblique asymptote. Okay, so if you have a, a spot for horizontal asymptote, you write none. You do not have a horizontal asymptote. So let's see, to find the oblique asymptote, you use long division.
you see how many times the bottom function will multiply and add into the top function. Okay, it's always going to be linear, so you're always going to y have a y equals mx plus b equation. Sometimes just y equals mx, you won't have a plus b, it'll be zero. Okay, but you always stop after you get your linear function. y equals mx plus b, linear equation. Oh, the oblique asymptote is always a line. There you go. Okay, such as y equals mx plus b. Okay, to find the y-intercept, you plug in 0 for every x. Okay, and then, of course, you simplify or you divide or you reduce or whatever it is that you have to do with the numbers that remain. Okay, you could have no y-intercept. That would be a perfectly fine answer. Okay, none is different than 0. Zero means it crosses at the origin. None means it doesn't cross at all. Okay, to find the x-intercept, you set your numerator equal to zero. This is the only thing you ever do with your numerator. Set your numerator equal to zero and solve. Okay, whatever value that happens to be is going to be your x-intercept. And of course, if your x-intercept and your vertical asymptote are the same, you're going to have yourself a hole where that asymptote intercept is supposed to be. Okay, so check your x-intercept with your vertical asymptote. If these things are the same, you're going to have a hole rather than a nice rational graph. Okay. So that's all the things you have to know about graphing. Vertical asymptote, horizontal asymptotes, oblique if necessary, y-intercept, x-intercept, and then sketching. You might need to plot some points. So in order to solve a rational equation, you need to find the least common denominator. Find and multiply each term by the least common denominator, LCD. Okay, you cancel whatever is left and you multiply through. We'll just put cancel and solve. There you go. Okay, so when you're finding a rational equation, you'll notice that it's a rational equation because it will have an equal sign in it. There'll be an equal sign here and a couple of rationals around there, just like we were doing Monday and Tuesday. Okay, so find the LCD, multiply each term by it, cancel things out, and then solve whatever's left. So let's do all of these things for these three functions. Okay, this is all the stuff you would need to do to graph an equation. Okay, so here you have some room to work on your paper, so you should be working. Okay, domain. In order to find the domain, you take your denominator and you set it not equal to zero. Okay, because the denominator can never be zero, so x can never be positive five. So the domain is all real values as long as x is never positive 5. Which means your vertical asymptote is x equals 5. Because these are always the same values. You always have an asymptote where you have a domain restriction. So this is a restriction not equal to 5. This is an equation of a vertical line. Okay, horizontal asymptote. Let's see. You have an x in the denominator and a number in the numerator. So the denominator has a larger value than the numerator. Okay, this is to the first power. That's the 0. So it is 
y equals 0 automatically is going to be your horizontal asymptote. Which, of course, is going to be no oblique asymptote because we have a horizontal asymptote. Okay, your x-intercept. Remember, we have to solve the numerator. Can we solve the numerator? No, we cannot, so there will be no x-intercept. And the y-intercept, let's see, what's the color for y? How about this one? 2 over 0 minus 5 is negative 2 fifths. So we have a y-intercept of negative 2 fifths. Okay. So be able to do all six of these things from domain to intercepts to asymptotes. Okay. And we just talked about how to do it up there. Okay. The second one, the domain. We take the denominator, we set it not equal to 0, so x cannot be positive 1. So domain all real values as long as x is not positive 1. There is one restriction on there. So your vertical asymptote must be x equals 1. That's where you're going to find the asymptote because that's what x cannot be. Okay, horizontal asymptotes. Let's see, we have an x squared over an x, which means that the numerator is larger than the denominator. So do we have one? No, we do not. There is no horizontal asymptote, which means we're going to have an oblique one. So let's calculate the oblique asymptote. x minus 1. How many times does that go into x squared minus 3x plus 4. So x times what is x squared? That's just x. So distributing, we get x squared minus x, and we have to subtract. So we change the signs. Minus 3 plus 1 is minus 2x and plus 4. We drop down the 4. So x times what is minus 2x? Minus 2. So if we multiply x by negative 2, we will get it. So this is the equation of your oblique asymptote. y equals x minus 2. Okay, so once you've gotten your x value and your intercept, you don't have to continue on with this division. You just write down the oblique asymptote equation x minus 2. Okay, x-intercept. Let's solve this numerator. 2x x squared minus 3x plus 4 equals 0. So is this factorable? Are there numbers that multiply to give you 4 and add to give minus 3? One and negative, nope, that would give you minus four. Nope. Which means we would have to use a quadratic formula. Too hard. Just getting it's not too hard to do. Okay, you'll not have one that has a quadratic formula on the test, but you would solve your numerator. <clears throat> you get two values, something uh, and something else. Maybe it'll be none. Let's see. Negative of b. No, b squared minus 4ac. This would have no x-intercepts because this would give you imaginary solutions. Anyway, that's, that's not what I want to do. <clears throat> um, y-intercept, to find the y-intercept, we plug in zeros. So 0 here, 0 here, 0 here. What is 4 divided by negative 1? Negative 4. So if this numerator were solvable, we'd have some x-intercepts. Uh, you plug in 0 to find the y-intercepts. <clears throat> bada bing, bada boom.
Okay, the third example here, domain, you set your denominator not equal to zero once again. 2x cannot equal positive 4, so x cannot equal 2. So all reals, as long as x does not equal 2. Which means your vertical asymptote is x equals 2. Because it's an equation of a line, this is a restriction. Horizontal asymptote, let's see. We have an x on top and an x on bottom. The denominator equals the numerator, so we have, look at the coefficients. So what is 4 divided by 2? 2, so it's y equals 2 as the horizontal asymptote, which means there is no oblique asymptote. You either have one or the other. If we have a horizontal, we don't have an oblique. If we don't have a horizontal, we do have an oblique. <coughs> X-intercepts. 4x plus 12 equals 0. 4x equals negative 12. x equals minus 3. y-intercept. 0, 0. What is 12 divided by negative 4? Also negative 3. Okay, not the same negative 3. This is on the x-axis. This is on the y-axis. Okay, so be able to do all six of these things if needed. Really just five if that's a none one. Okay, moving on. Page number two. Okay, let's sketch a graph by plotting asymptotes and intercepts. Okay, so let's see. The vertical asymptote. What color was that? That was pink. We have x minus 2 equals 0. So x equals 2 is the vertical asymptote. So here is your vertical asymptote line through positive 2. <clears throat> okay, horizontal. We have x on top, x on bottom. <clears throat> So we look at the coefficients. That's a 1 over 1. <coughs> so y equals 1 is your horizontal asymptote. Okay, what else do we need? The x-intercept. What number plus 4 equals 0? Minus 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. It crosses way over here at minus 4. And y-intercept, 0 plus 4 over 0 minus 2 is minus 2. So the graph will cross through both of these lines. So let's make the graph cross through both of those lines and match up with this asymptote. Go through there, go through, oops, missed it, there. I can do better than that, so can you. Through there, that's better, and down. <coughs> Because of symmetry, it will be the same up here. So let's see, we had a point that was 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. So 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, there's lots of symmetry. So if you have nice pretty points on one side of your asymptotes, you should have similar points on the other side of your asymptotes. Okay, do the best you can to graph these. There's the y-intercept, here's your x-intercept. Okay, basic rational function has the first quadrant and third quadrant. Okay, now this one. Um, let's see, vertical asymptotes. 
Uh, x plus 2 equals 0, so x equals minus 2. Oh, pink. So here is minus 2. Um, horizontal asymptote, we have x squared over x, so there's not going to be any horizontal asymptote. <clears throat> so let's see about our rational. x plus 2, how many times does that go into x squared plus 5x plus 4? So x times x is x squared. x squared plus 2x, and we have to subtract. So minus and minus. K turns out to be 3x plus 4, so plus 3. So x plus 3 crosses at positive 3, and it has a positive 1 slope. So here is your oblique asymptote. Okay, 1 up, 1 over, 1 down, 1 left to give you all the points of your oblique asymptote. <clears throat> okay, x-intercepts. Let's solve our numerator. x squared plus 5x plus 4 equals 0. Okay, what numbers multiply to give you 4 and add to give 5? 1 and 4. That means x is negative 1 or x is negative 4. So it crosses at negative 1 and it crosses at 1, 2, 3, 4. And where does it cross your y-axis? We have 0 here, 0 here, 0 here. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So it crosses at positive 2. So because it can't cross these asymptotes, the graph is going to be over here somewhere and go down to the pink one and up to the blue one. And it has to cross over here, which means it will come up from this pink one, go down through that one and come over here to your blue one. Okay, it looks sort of hyperbolic, like a hyperbola. <coughs> Okay, so you can do this just by plotting intercepts and what you know about asymptotes, which should be lots. Oops, that should be red. Okay, so be ready to graph some rationals doing all the things that we did previous, finding all those things. Okay, and the last one are some solving. So let's solve these things by finding the least common denominator. So in this case, you already have two fractions, so we just have to cross multiply. So x times 3x minus 5 equals x minus 2 times 2x plus 6. Okay, we have to do some distribution. 3x squared minus 5x equals 2x squared plus 6x minus 4x minus 12. Okay, so make sure you distribute correctly if you have to. And now we'll combine all of our like terms. 3x squared minus 5x. 2x squared plus 2x minus 12. Okay, because we have an x squared, we're going to get everything onto the same side. Even the 12. Go over there. So let's see. x squared minus 7x plus 12 equals 0. Okay, what numbers multiply to give you 12 and add to give 7? 4 and negative 3. 
Okay, negative 4 times negative 3 is 12. Negative 4 plus negative 3 is negative 7. So that means x can be 4 or x can be 3. So now let's check. If we have a 4, 4 minus 2, that's not 0. And 4, that's fine. So 4 works. 3 minus 1, that's not 0. Good. So both of these are answers. Neither one of them are extraneous. They're both solutions. Okay, let's change colors. This one's denominator. We have a 5, a 3, a 4, and a 5. So 5 and 4 and 3. 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 So we can't stop the 5. 4 times 3 times x is 12x. Cancel out the 3. 5 times 4 times 1 is 20. You cancel out the 4. 5 times 3 times 3 is 45. Cancel out the 5. 2 times 4 times 3 is 24. Now we just have to solve for x. So let's see, this 12x is smaller, so I will subtract 12x from both sides. 20 equals 33x minus 24. We'll add 24 to both sides. 44 equals 33x. Divide by 33. And can 44 over 33 be reduced? Sure it can. It can reduce to 4 thirds. Okay, both of these have an 11 in common. So if you take out the 11, divide that out, you get 4 thirds. Okay. And last but not least, Lee. Um, this denominator, x squared minus 4 factors to x minus 2, x plus 2. So let's factor the quadratic so we can see exactly what our denominators are. So we have x minus 2 and x plus 2. x minus 2 and x plus 2. x minus 2 and x plus 2. Okay, each term gets multiplied by the LCD. So cancel this one. And we have 3x plus 2s minus, okay, the x plus 2s cancel, 5x minus 2s equals 6, because all these things cancel. Okay, make sure you are multiplying whatever is left by whatever you have. <clears throat> so now we just have to solve what distributes 3x plus 6 minus 5x plus 10 because it's a minus 5 we're distributing equals 6 combine like terms negative 3x or sorry positive 3x and minus 5x is minus 2x 6 and 10 is 16 okay we'll just solve this real quick Looks like x equals 5. So going back and checking, 5 minus 2, that's fine. 5 plus 2, that's fine. 5 squared minus 4. All of those are not 0. Okay, Find and multiply each term by the LCD. Cancel things out. And finish up. Okay. So that is all. Make sure you get all your work done. We'll have a quiz tomorrow. Yes, the quiz will count. Okay, how well you do on your quiz should be a pretty good assessment of how you'll do on your test. Of course, unless you do badly, and then you can study for the next day. Okay, that's all.